Please help! Help me! Hello? Back here! I'm back here! Hey! Mr. Wake? <laughs> oh, hell. It happened. Just the way it was on that page. I found... Game true. It knew. So dark. It'll come back for me. You must... The lights. In the office. I have the key. Okay, Rusty. Hang on. I'll be right back. Whatever did this couldn't be far. Rusty had found a page from the manuscript. It would help me understand what had happened. <coughs> Shh, good boy. The only way to make sure that Rusty was safe was to get the power running and the lights back on. At the last instant, I changed direction and threw myself down. The axe splintered the trunk of a tree. I stumbled into the pool of bright light. My lungs burned. I was too exhausted to move. I tensed as I waited for the killing blow, but it never came. I raised my head. Nothing moved in the darkness beyond. For the moment, bathed in the cold light, I was safe. too late. Someone had destroyed the circuit breaker. There was no way to get the lights back on. Rusty! 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 The ground was covered with oily patches that looked like liquid darkness. Just need hunting my senses. Something had torn a mammoth sized hole in the wall. Don't feed the animals. Fishing is only for me. Who purchased a park? Fishing. License! Obey! The park ranger's instructions. At all times. Rusty? Rusty, no! Never! Never approach hunting in 100 yards! Two bears and wolves! Never approach any other wild life of the closer than 25 yards! Pets must be leashed! Never! Never! Leave your pet unattended! It is against the law! To remove any natural objects or historical artifacts from the park! Gross!
Forget about it, Barry. It's just me going crazy. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. You're not crazy. I wish you were crazy, but you're not crazy. Ow, be careful. Stay in the cabin. Don't open the door for anyone. I mean it. In that last instant of consciousness, Rusty thought about Rose. He was older than she was. Rose was barely out of her teens, but she made him feel young and forget what a train wreck his long dead marriage had been. He still wore the ring. He'd been waiting for her to tell him to take it off. Now she never would. Lover's Peak was at the far end of the nature trail. Nobody in Bright Falls seemed to know where Al was, but Rose, the waitress at the diner, had seen him. From what Barry could tell, Al pretty much fell off the face of the earth when he left the diner. Rose was just the kind of fan that Al hated, but she really tried to help. She was smart, too, knew a lot about what was going on in the town, knew a lot about Al, even knew who Barry was. Barry liked her. That was no big surprise. When it came to women, Barry and Al rarely saw eye to eye.
I turned the corner, afraid of what the flashlight's beam might reveal. Suddenly, a roughly painted symbol of a torch glowed in the light. Behind it, hidden by a rock, sat a battered metal trunk. It was here for a reason, packed with supplies, batteries, flares, ammo, things you need to make it through the darkness of the night. Something left behind by someone who knew what I knew, and more. Agent Nightingale didn't want to be in Bright Falls. These little communities revolted him, and he didn't like the trees or the coffee. He now knew that impossible horrors lurked behind the storefronts and smiles. He desperately wanted to turn the car around and just drive until he passed out or ran out of road and booze. But he had a job to do. He had a rider to catch, at any cost. <laughs> 